Hi, Dr. Ho here, I am going to explain a science fiction movie from the year 2013, titled, Snowpiercer. Spoilers ahead, enjoy and take care. In 2031, 17 years after an attempt to stop global warming with a chemical called CW7, in which the plan catastrophically backfires and causes an ice age that kills all life on Earth except for the people who live on the Snowpiercer, a perpetual motion train that travels a span of track that loops one time around the globe in a year. It was created and run by reclusive transportation magnet, Mr. Wilford. The passengers on the train are segregated, with the elite in the extravagant front cars and the poor crammed into squalid tail compartments overseen by armed guards. Urged by his father figure, Gilliam, Curtis Everett, and his second-in-command, Edgar, lead the tail passengers in a revolt after they realize the guards' weapons have no ammunition, bullets are believed to be extinct due to a previous revolt. They free Namgoon Mansu, a captive security specialist, who insists that his clairvoyant daughter, Yona, be freed as well. Namgoon helps the tail mob progress forward, but they find themselves facing guards with melee weapons, overseen by Minister Mason. During the battle, the train goes into a tunnel, causing total darkness. The guard force, who have night vision, begin picking off the blind rebels. However, the tail sectioners launch a counter-attack with torches and push the guards back. Edgar is held hostage, but Curtis abandons him to capture Mason, forcing her to order the remaining guards to surrender, while Edgar is fatally stabbed. The tail army stays back, holding the guards captive, while Curtis takes Mason, Namgoon, Yona, skilled fighter Gray, and Tanya and Andrew, two parents who have had their children taken from them, toward the front of the train. Curtis's group travels through several opulent cars. Namgoon and Yona recognize a landmark outside and consider that the ice may be thawing. The group reaches a schoolroom, where a teacher is indoctrinating the children on Wilford's greatness. A bald man brings eggs for the children to open to celebrate the 18th circumnavigation of the Earth. The bald man goes to the tail army and shoots them with loaded automatic guns hidden under the eggs, revealing that bullets still exist. The captured guards are freed, as is Mason's henchman Franco. The teacher, who received a gun from the bald man, kills Andrew before Gray kills her. Franco broadcasts to the classroom his execution of Gilliam, this prompts Curtis to kill Mason. Curtis's group moves on, but Franco catches up with them, killing Gray and Tanya. Franco is then seemingly killed by Curtis and Namgoon. The two, along with Yona, continue onward. In the last car before the engine, Namgoon reveals that the reason he collected the drug Chronol was to use it as an explosive to escape the train with Yona, believing they can survive. Curtis stops them, as he wants to meet Wilford. Curtis explains that in the early days of the train, 17 years before, the tail section had resorted to cannibalism, and he had been ready to eat the infant Edgar, but Gilliam offered him his arm instead. Now Curtis wants to face Wilford to ask why he created this closed ecosystem. The engine door opens, and Wilford's assistant Claude emerges and wounds Namgoon before inviting Curtis inside. Curtis meets Wilford and, to his shock, learns that he and Gilliam conspired to stage Curtis's rebellion to reduce the tail section's population to sustainable levels. Wilford orders 74% of the tail passengers killed. He then offers Curtis his position leading the train. Curtis appears ready to accept when Yona overpowers Claude, rushes in, and pulls open a floorboard to reveal Andrew and Tanya's children, Andy and Timmy, working the engine as slaves. Appalled, Curtis knocks out Wilford and rescues Timmy from the machinery, though he loses his arm in the process. Curtis gives Yona matches to light the fuse for the chronol, while Namgoon fights and kills Franco, who had followed them, along with people from another car. As the door to the engine room was damaged during the fighting and will not close, Curtis and Namgoon use their bodies to protect Yona and Timmy from the blast. The explosion triggers an avalanche that derails and wrecks the train. With Namgoon unresponsive, Yona escapes the wreckage with Timmy. They see a polar bear in the distance, indicating that life exists outside the train. And the bear notices them, 